everybody. It's Logan here, once again, for Red Bandana Gaming. Now, today, I, I know we normally do videos like this when we travel to Orlando and retro game stores there, but this weekend, uh, depending on when you're watching this, um, I just got back from a trip to Washington, D.C. So, while I was up there, we were up there for four days, and I decided, with a little bit of free time, besides doing all the uh, sightseeing of the monuments and uh, Capitol building and all that other good stuff, I decided to check out a couple uh, retro game stores. Turned out I just went to one, because a lot of them were pretty far away. So there was one called E-Starland. They also have a website called e-starland.com. Uh, they were in Chan. Tilly, Virginia, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's how you pronounce it. So it was about maybe 24 miles away, 23, 24 from where we were standing. So we decided to take a little trip and drive. Not too far. It took us about maybe mm, 30, 40 minutes with traffic. And we went two days. We went on the Saturday and went back on the Sunday. And the Sunday they had a Thing called Gamers Exchange, and I picked up a lot of good stuff there. So, to start, that's everything. This bag right here is actually a Wii U travel case. Not the one that I went with, but we had to buy one because we bought so many games. So, let's open this up. As you can see, it's not a tiny case. Uh, now, that I have to take out. I left my boarding pass in there. So, this, I haven't unpacked it since. The headset I took with me because I was listening and whatnot. I got my regular Switch light with me. Those didn't come from there. So now let's start with, let's move this to the side. And let's start going through these games now what you see here is only games that i bought not including the games that my wife got normally she gets ps4 and switch this time with solely switch so this time we will start with the switch games that i picked up um now these I've never played this one before. It's Fallen Legion. Here, let, let, let's fix this light a little bit because it's a little washed out. Point it up. Does that look better? That look better, guys? Okay. Fallen Legion on the Switch. I never played this one myself. Um, I know it's from NIS America. It is a RPG. It looks like tactics style, maybe turn-based. Uh, looked pretty good. I was a little uh, hesitant, but I decided to go with that one anyway. Next one. This one, I heard so many good things out. Mm. Ooh, excuse me. Got a little burpy burps. Uh, next thing, I uh, this game, I've never played it myself. It was originally came out on the Wii U. And it's supposed to be very good if you like GTA style. Uh, Lego City Undercover. I picked it up pre-owned. Now, one cool thing that they do, and you'll see some of the other games. Uh, this one was pre-owned, but they seal it. They put them in shrink wrap, and they put their stickers on the outside. Genius! I know! Instead of sticking them on the box, like said GameStop, they shrink wrap them, like they usually do in Japan, and put their stickers on the outside. Genius, isn't it? Now, these next two games, Switch games, I actually didn't uh, get there. Uh, they've been a little harder to get down here in South Florida. So, we happened to go to a local... Uh, the Best Buy happened to be right by the Target because we uh, we forgot a couple of things. So, I had to go pick up um, uh, a, a couple of extra things at the Target, some clothes. So, uh, we decided to stop by the Best Buy. I got... Bayonetta, because I can find this pre-owned, but I can't find it new. And without the Bayonetta download, you're just getting Bayonetta 2. So I picked that up, and then Bubsy, paws on fire. 
I remember this coming out way back in the when uh, from Super Nintendo for Super Nintendo. Never played it. I know the horror stories, uh, and it's an auto running action action automatique, which is French. Um, I, I guess like Super Mario Run. I don't know anything about the style of gameplay, so it was cheap. This thing was dirt cheap, so I decided to go for it. So these are the only Switch games I got. Everything else is not current gen. So Switch, we'll put those up there. Mm. Next we'll go with, uh, let's see, we'll go with the PSP. Now, with the PSP, uh, I have a lot of fond memories of the PSP because I used to play the crap out of this over the original DS. Just because I, I preferred the games that were on there because they were more, um, I don't know, I, I would say there were a lot of RPGs on the DS, but more child shovelware oriented, which kind of turned me off from the original DS even though I have a ton of games on the DS. I played quite a bit, but... I have a soft spot for the PSP, even though I'm not a huge Sony fan. I think this is one of their best consoles. This one, Metal Gear Acid 2. I loved Metal Gear Acid. This one, this one was an acid trip. They changed the art style. They made everything really weird in this one, and it played oddly. I got ha whoops, I got halfway through it and never finished it. So now I can finally finish it. I still have my a save file and again see sealed sealed they resealed them i love this and they even tell you when you get them whether they're complete or not so they have a internal website that you can access on your phone really cool thing there um i'm gonna drop the link to them down below um fantastic company uh their prices are just unbeatable so that is metal gear acid 2 next one now, the next one, I never played. I was never big into the series. But once you see the title of it, you'll understand. And I thought it was funny. And I think it was like seven bucks. Siphon Filter Logan Shadow. Ha! The name alone. I never bought this. I wanted to. I just didn't want to spend the money on a Siphon Filter game back then. Now, for like seven bucks, hey, had to go in the into the, the collection. Logan Shadow. It'll go up on the shelf. See Logan. Ha! There we go. That's it. Next one. Hey, if you guys have a problem with it, you can fight me. Don't fight me. It's it's we're we we're, we're all non-violence only in video games unless Yeah, no one must. So I like this movie. This game is based off of a movie based off an anime. People hate it. I loved it. So I bought the game. I forgot about this game. Dragon Ball Evolution. <laughs> I think it speaks for itself. But Dragon Ball Evolution, yeah, it was a fighting game. I don't remember if I played this or not back in the day. All I know is I really love the movie. Yeah, I still love that movie. I don't give a crap what people think. I know it disrespects the source material, but it was hilarious. I went in expecting an awful movie, and I got a great movie. It was fantastic. <laughs> so... I think this was like five or six dollars and it's complete too, so yep. Those are the PSP games I picked up. Next one. Uh Dreamcast title. Plastic kinda came off this one, but WWF Royal Rumble. Um yeah, yeah. I played this in the arcade for the first time back in the day, and when I found out it was on the Dreamcast, I ha I had to buy it, so I bought it way back when. And uh, I don't have any more, now I do, and I just figured, hey, what the heck, might as well, it played uh, using the, the Smackdown engine, so, hey, why not, I think I got this for 4 or $5, don't, don't quote me on that one, I don't quite remember, but I think it was, it, it was less than 10 Next one is PS1 game. Yep. It's back. I remember buying this at Walmart when I was young. And I was like, man, this is fun because I think I got it for 10 bucks and I enjoyed it. So, bong. <laughs> uh, next, we are going to go with 
two Sega Genesis games. One I already have, but the box is in pretty poo condition. So when I saw it here, and there was two different versions, if I'm not mistaken, now I'm going to have to check. So I'm checking. It doesn't. Yeah, the one I had. Yeah. So I just looked because I didn't even realize I got the one with the alternate slip cover. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Yeah. So I already had it, but the box is beaten. It has the alternate slip cover. So the one that has the the artwork from the cartridge but <laughs> they resealed it i love that and now the chance of me opening it back up because i have the one that's open is pretty slim but i like the fact that it's sealed and it's uh it, it had no manual unfortunately this one had no manual but the other one i have has it so i think i got this this one was a little more expensive i want to say this was around 15 but with the box being as minty the other box wasn't as minty and it did the the other version had the slip cover the alternate slip cover which i already have had the manual but it wasn't as minty so i figured i'd go with that one next one it's now the last game and it followed the other one power rangers the movie for the genesis i have every power rangers game that's been released in the u.s now once i got this one so every console game, because I know there are PC games and stuff like that. I only have one of those, and that was the Ninja Storm. But most of them are like child-friendly stuff like that, learning games or mini games. But no, console-wise, U.S. console release, I now have every Power Rangers video game. Yeah. Thank you to that one. And I like how, again, they seal them. To keep the dust and stuff from getting in there. Fantastic. Next is one that Lich really enjoyed when he was young and we recently discussed it unfortunately it was going to be in a video but we had problems with that video uh so we'll be remaking that one soon but now you guys know it's a little bit of a spoiler it'll be in the next one it'll be in that video and it's called tiger heli in the box yes on the back there's no manual unfortunately um sadly but to have it in a box and to have the original cartridge and everything in there, um, fantastic. And this was, the regular version was like $3.50, $3.50. This one was $3.90 with the box. Yeah, how could I say no? Had to. So that I think was my only NES pick this time. But hey, yeah, cool to have another one in a box. Next we'll go to, oh, this is PS3. Now, these are more along the lines... I had these back in the day. Uh, we used to play when friends came over. It was a party-style game. My wife now loves these. She's got a number of them on PS4 and Xbox One. But in this series, these were PlayStation exclusives. And these are on, on PS3. SingStar. And SingStar Volume 2. A lot of songs. Um fun a lot of them i don't know i usually sing most of the uh, the rock ones but hey i think these were four or five dollars a piece not too shabby i have the microphone so hey it's fun next one is for zagami cube nintendo gamecube i already had this but i didn't have it with the book this one has the book and the original gamecube box and that is two rock evolution Unfortunately, the one I have does not have the original box. Uh, I got it disc only and I reprinted the artwork. So when they had this one, original, um, GameCube everything, manual, complete, I had to pick it up. I think this one was, I want to say $10, $10. I think it was $10, maybe less, but uh, very good steal. Great game for at that price next one is for 360 one of them um i know it's an awful game but with the movie just releasing and i haven't been able to find a complete copy just for shits and giggles yeah it is a platinum hit but sonic the smeghog i mean Hed hedgehog i know this game was bad it was bad i remember i bought it when it came out normally i don't do platinum hits because yeah they're platinum hits 
But, um, yeah, I was like, what the heck? I couldn't find a complete copy of this original anywhere uh, in good condition. And this one was in minty, fresh condition. I think I paid 15 for it, maybe 14 And it was worth it. And I was like, okay, if anything, I'll... Uh, I'll find another copy later on down the road, but at least I have it. I can make a video of it, and it'll be f uh, not going to be fun. Next game, I already have, but Lich asked me to pick it up because something happened to his copy. He doesn't remember, can't find it, whatnot. And that's Eternal Sonata. A great game, uh, in my opinion. It did later come out for the, the PS3, but apparently this is the better version, from my understanding. Uh, I have it myself, and... Um, yeah, a complete copy. This one was ten dollars. I think it was nine ninety eight or something. But it was, it was ten dollars. So hey, not too shabby. Sealed. He's gonna be happy. Now, the next set are N six four titles, and that's as you can see the inside of the case. Kind of cool. And there's still more games in another pouch on the outside. So let's put that aside. Let's put these right here and put the bag to the side okay now son of a the bags the bag wants to fight me so you probably already saw what the first one was so we'll do that hydro thunder now this is the original one that came out on the n64 if i'm not mistaken it also came out on the dreamcast later on but this is where i originally played it i love this series well i shouldn't say series this, this game Hydro Thunder, because I know they came out with Arctic Thunder and a couple of others, but they just weren't the same. This one's fantastic. I have the uh, the remake on the Xbox One because Microsoft bought the franchise, if I'm not mistaken. And this one was the most expensive, besides the Switch games, this one I think was the most expensive game out of all the ones that I purchased, and it was $20. That's, that's about average price for this. So this one was not the greatest of deals in terms of all around because it's just about asking price so i was like what the heck let me grab that one next one is another one that i got just a little below asking price and it was flying dragon i never had this game uh i know it was some kind of fighting game and uh this one was i think around 17 18 no 17 16 something like that but i was looking at some of the prices for this this is right this usually goes around 20 bucks so i was like okay cool these are the two most expensive n64 games i bought so nothing too crazy in terms of uh n64 titles now three of the next ones are sports and i don't do sports but this is the only sport i like and now i think i have all of the I think I now have all the sports games. I might be missing one. I'd have to double check. I think I might have all of them. But we'll put them all. Mike Piazza, Strike Zone. All-Star Baseball 2000. Now, this was my favorite of all the All-Stars. I don't know what about this version. 2000 was my favorite. And no, it's not Jeter because I hate them. the Yankees. Yeah, you want to fight about it. I hate the Yankees. I'm a Marlins fan. Um, but this one I loved. I played the crap out of that one. And this one, Sammy Sosa, Triple Play Baseball 2000. Never played the Triple Play series until PS2, because I didn't really do the EA Sports. Uh, I preferred the Activision uh, the, of the All-Star. But these were all $2 a piece. $2 a piece. Yeah, I get their sports games, but come on, $2 a piece. Next one. I thought I had, but apparently I didn't. I checked out my uh, uh, app. I use an app called uh, GameEye to keep track of my collection so I know what I have because, God forbid, with a collection this large. <sighs> yeah. Extreme G. How did I not have Extreme G? And I think this was like $7. And, yeah, I was. that's a little under average price because average price is between 7 and 10 So well, last time I think I saw this was 10 bucks, And at 7 I was like, all right, pretty cheap. That's pretty good. So... Those were the N64 games I picked up for a total of four, five, six N64 to add to the collection, which I'm now well over 100 titles. I'd have to double check, but I know I'm well over 100, Mark. Maybe 120, 130. So next, not sure what that is. Oh, from East Starlin. 
Let's see what else we got in here. Oh, okay. The one Game Boy game, because I'm trying to uh, get my hands on all the Turok games. Turok 2, Seeds of Evil, for the Game Boy, slash Game Boy Color. Now, they even put the games, the Game Boy games, in these little sealed pouches. How cool is that? I mean, yeah, that's just cool. Protected. I love the fact that they clean them, and they put them in the plastic to protect them from dust. Because who knows how long they'll sit there before someone buys them, and they don't get dusty. Awesome, you know, great practice, guys. Fantastic. Now, uh, that's the only thing that was in that outer pocket. Now I have another pocket in here. Okay. That, no, no, these are chargers. As you can see, this is the first thing I've opened since I've gotten back. Oh, this was cool. I saw this. It was a Hyperkin product. And I think it was Bob Wolf who mentioned it uh, on Wolf Den, if you check out his channel. Um, I can't remember if that was the only place I saw it, but when I saw it there, I had to get it. It's the controller adapter, so you can use your N64 on the Switch or PC. But yeah, I use it on my Switch. <laughs> I'm going to use it on my Switch to play games like Two Rock and stuff. Yeah, I know the N64 is missing some buttons and stuff to use, but that's a cool, it's a little cool device. And I think it was like 14, 15. So it wasn't too expensive. Might have even been as low as 12. I don't remember. But when I saw it, I was like, cool, got to pick it up. And I love Hyperkin. Hyperkin makes some of the best third party stuff. Now, the next one actually has a price on it, and I've never seen one this low uh, 4K Switcher, three port for $11.95. Yeah, they were saying, yeah, it's not bad quality. You know, I doubt it's going to do 4K, but I don't need 4K for the TV that I have in the game room here. The living room's the 4K HDR, blah, blah, blah. The one I, I use to uh, do all my recordings only at 1080. So I thought that would actually be great so I could hook up all my Retrons at the same time uh, because I don't have the Retron 5. I have the, if you guys have seen the unboxing videos, I have the Super Retron HD Mega Retron HD and the Retron HD, so the NES, Super NES, and Genesis, uh, respectively, which all play their Japanese counterparts. And now I hook them all up at once, bam, good to go. Fantastic. So, um, Dino Hologram! Woo! I went to the Smithsonian and I got chocolate dinosaur, even though it was Jurassic World. I got dinosaur poop too. Check out the Instagram, you'll see dinosaur poop. That's about it. Um, yeah, that's it I got from DC. So, oh, yeah, I picked up some games while I was out today. So, sure, let me just show you those. Even though I didn't pick them up when I was in DC, I got them today, which would be the 25th of February, if you're watching this. Uh, one game, unfortunately, I didn't get to order. So, local awesomeness of CD Trader, Geo, got these in, and I got blasphemous for the switch i have it digitally but you can't beat physical and it was limited run and i missed the order window for it uh totally forgot about it and i hadn't checked the site and then found out it was already ended by the time uh i went to order it so lucky me he got it in fantastic next one yeah the Mega Man zero zx legacy collection I heard this sucker stupid hard to get now. I pre-ordered mine, um, so I picked it up, and apparently it's really hard to get now, because they were, I guess, released in very limited numbers. But there you go, everybody, and that's, that's it. That's Those were my picky-ups. Oh, oh, I forgot, and I'm going to do another video on this one, too, comparing it with the original. While I was at the, the East Starland on on the Sunday, they said they actually had an um, uh, event called Gamers Exchange, and they had some vendors there to show off their retro stuff and selling theirs. Uh, one guy, uh, he creates, he uses the the GBA, no, the, yeah, the GBAs, the DMGs, Game Boy Colors and stuff like that, um, and he, he mods them. I know there's a lot of people that do that to give them backlit um, screens and whatnot but they charge 250 300 ridiculous 
there was going to be a white DMG, which is the original Game Boy that I went to pick up, but I had to ask my wife to make sure. As soon as I stepped away, someone right behind me bought it. Hurt my heart. But he told me he'll make me another one because I bought this from him, and it's fantastic. What? This is Game Boy Pocket. Light. Screen lights up. Yeah, I know the screen's a little lighter. I mean, sorry, a little smaller. But it's fantastic. I mean, it's gorgeous. And he even threw in Super Mario Land, six golden coins. Super Mario Land 2, one of the best games on the Game Boy ever. So I picked that up, got that for a great deal. Uh, less than $100, where normally those things can go for $200, $250, $300. Um, uh, keep an eye out. There's going to be a video coming for this soon. And uh, I'll link the, the gentleman's uh, IG and Etsy and everything in it because I'm going to compare it with the, the standard pocket that I have because I have a standard blue one. So, yeah, that's everything I picked up while I was in D.C., minus these two, of course. And, yeah, so thank you guys for watching. Um, fantastic, fantastic pickup, if I do say so myself. Got a lot of great titles. Um... Yeah, and the place is called E Starland in Chantilly. Again, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing it. Uh, Virginia, not too far out of uh, Washington D.C. I'll link them below. I uh, put a couple pictures on our Instagram, which is at Red Bandana Gaming, um, of of the store. But hey, check them out. Head to their website, and you know what? It, yeah, you might find something you like. A lot of great retro stuff there. So thank you guys for watching. Again, head on over to redbandanagaming.com for all the new stuff. We've got some new articles. Uh, Going to put up some pictures of the of the DC trip over there with some of the Red Bandana-ness. And head on over to our Instagram and Facebook at Red Bandana Gaming, our Twitter, which is RBG underscore retro. And if you haven't already, subscribe. We're really trying to get to that thousand mark. You guys can really help us out. Uh, every subscribe, every like counts. So thank you guys. Thank you so much for those of you who subscribe. And for those of you who are hitting it now, thank you for doing that. And like we always say, be legendary. Thanks again.